And we're joined now once again by Ian Grant from Fathers Who Dare Win. Ian, thanks for joining us. Pleasure. Uh, Ian, when it comes to relationships, uh, I know this is something you talk about a lot, that communication between a couple can can make or break a relationship. And the question that we've got today is, is very much about uh, well, communication and conversations. Uh, a, a wife writes, I find it very difficult to have a meaningful conversation with my husband. We can chat about each other's days, but, uh, well, how things have gone at work, etc. But nothing that goes any deeper than that. When I do try and talk, I'm not sure he understands or even cares about my feelings and what I'm trying to communicate. Where do I start with this? I, I think you've got to sh- share with him how important his listening is to you, you know, and, and how how you value it. And say, look, would you mind tomorrow night, I'll cook your favorite meal and let's allow half an hour where I just want to communicate some things with you. And you forewarned them. Now, the male brain forewarned arms itself and, and is prepared. But throwing surprises at a male brain uh, can freak it out. <laughs> you know, I don't know how else to say that. And and share your feelings. Now, Mary and I went to uh, Denver University because uh, in, in America, divorce costs billions and billions of dollars. And the State Department paid them $4 million to find a solution to divorce. And they found their th- um, reasoning was it's, it's a breakdown in communication. And they introduced what they call the floor and, or the salt shaker. Whoever has the salt shaker has the right to talk. The other person has to listen. Uh, and... Uh, when this person who's talking with a salt shaker, you're not allowed to say anything. And then when they've finished, they say to you, have you heard what I've said? And you tell them what you've heard. And when they agree that they've been heard, then it's your turn. And when Mary and I did that for the first time, man, I found it hard. I was wanting to jump in all the time. And we have used that a lot. And we discipline ourselves now. We don't need the salt shaker, but we know what we're doing. And I think for if you can get into your husband's brain for a woman to be listened to, it's so close for her to be loved that she can't tell the difference, and that's how important it is. And uh, you, you may in- introduce another way of doing it, and that's going for a walk one night, half an hour out, half an hour back, and you just say to him, look, I'd like to just do something. Would you mind if I share uh, about my life ever s- from when I can remember? And you just share it. And on the way back, he does it. You've set the pace, so he knows what it's expected of him. And you make no comment for 24 hours, and you just let the it settle in your brains and let the Holy Spirit speak about it. And that'll make a big difference. Sorry. It <laughs> well, was quite nice. Sorry, no, no, that's right. Nice. That's quite nice to let it go. We but... can just make the theme music of the show. <laughs> it's my wife. I should communicate with her. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Can I explain an irony? Um, I'm in a studio filming a conversation with Ian Grant talking about how husband and wives should communicate. <laughs> and I forgot to put my phone on silent. And um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I'm happy to get the kids from school. That's fine. That's absolutely fine. And I'll turn my phone off. Okay. See you later. Love you. Bye. So, so Ian, sorry to, to interrupt you there with, with the phone call. You, uh, perhaps... But wasn't it wonderful? It was your wife and you answered it. I did. And and that gives her the message, she's important. And even though, you know, I was imagining her holding the salt shaker and I thought, well, I have to I have to listen attentively <laughs> because they're, they're videoing this process. But just, I mean, I interrupted that. And it was great stuff. I liked the the story about going for a walk together. Would you be able to reset that? that I mean, I think that's a great idea. Yeah, of, you, you, you just go for a walk. And it's important she does it first because she'll set how to do it. Women are good at communicating those things. And she, she just tells him everything that she remembers of her earlier life. And then you, you, on the way back, you do it, and you don't speak for twenty, don't speak about it for twenty four hours. Let it settle in, and it's good to pray that the Holy Spirit settles it in your brain. I learned more about my Mary. I think we did it when I was married to her for thirty six years. I learned a lot about her just in that half hour walk. But it was focused listening. When you do the sharing, make sure you're sharing feelings only. Uh, see, it's easy for women to mind read you know if your mother taught you how to listen you wouldn't be like this if you weren't such a selfish person you know you take all that mind reading out uh, men do the put down thing look i know it's your time of the month and you're emotional i don't want to hear this rubbish you know or you know you do go on about these things you take all that out you just share your feelings and and then afterwards you make an agreement how you can improve 
uh, the, what you've discussed. And, and it may happen at the most inappropriate times. You may be driving. She starts pouring out a heart. You just grip the steering wheel a little tighter and think, I've been chosen from all the people in the world to be this lady's sounding board. What an honor. Don't try and rescue her. Just use powerful words like, uh-huh, oh, yes, really. You'll find a solution, honey. You're smart. Hmm. All right, great stuff. Great advice as always. Ian Grant from fatherswhodearwin.com. Thanks for joining us.